Real people, real breakthroughs. This is the Psychology of Eating podcast, where psychology and nutrition meet to uncover the true causes of our unwanted eating concerns. Your relationship with food will never be the same. Now, here's your host, eating psychology expert and founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, Mark David. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. And here we are in the Psychology of Eating podcast. And today I'm with Kim. Welcome, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And I'm going to say a few words to viewers and listeners to get you all caught up about what we're doing. So Kim and I are going to have a session and we're going to work on whatever she wants to work on. And we're going to go for no more than an hour. And I'm going to ask her, gosh, 15 or 20 minutes worth of questions. And we're going to try to uh, condense, you know, four months to maybe even a year's worth of work into one session. And the idea is to give you, Kim, just um, whatever you need to keep you moving forward on your journey to help you get where you need to go. Hopefully some openings, some good insights, a breakthrough. And and that's the idea, to kind of push the pedal to the metal on transformation. So, Kim, if you could wave your magic wand and get whatever you wanted from this session, what might that look like for you? Um, definitely more health. Um, and the weight isn't as important now. Like, I, I do want to get weight off, but it, it's more about um, how I feel. Like, I, even after a short four-hour shift, my feet hurt, my knees hurt. Um, it just seems my body is very inflamed, I, I am a holistic nutritionist, so I, I listen and I know a lot of knowledge. I know how to eat, but there's just something there that I can't figure out. Um, my kids are getting older, and I always say I really want to be the grandma that can run in the park with the kids, not, not just sitting and doing puzzles because that's all I can do. Okay, so you want to lose some weight, and you also have, um, it sounds like sort of just pain, inflammation, fatigue, is it as well? Yes, fatigue as yeah. well. So first, how much weight do you want to lose? Um, I would say 30 mm -hmm. pounds is probably fair. Mm -hmm. And when was the last time you weighed 30 pounds less? Uh, two years ago. Uh huh. What was different two years ago, do you think? Um. I went to Hong Kong and competed in dragging boating for the worlds. I was uh, training five to seven days a week. Ooh, um, yeah. <laughs> I was really excited about um, going to Hong Kong and the opportunity. And then it almost seemed when I got home that everything started turning around. The more fatigue, the weight gain. Um, I just thought I had adrenal fatigue. I had just, for so many years, like my husband and I ran a business, three kids, active kids. So your life was all about, you know, getting to the gym, running your business, dealing with the kids. And I mean, I, I no regrets on any of that, but I just thought, you know, I think my body's just telling me it's time to slow down. Uh huh. Kim, how old are you now? 47. 47. And um, where are you at in the in the whole menopause continuum? Um, I I'm still like really regular with um, my menstrual cycle, and that I I don't believe it's hormonal. I that's never seemed to be an issue with me, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And have you seen any kind of medical practitioners for the fatigue and the inflammation? Uh, yes, they did. Uh, about a year ago, they did um, all kinds of blood tests, thyroid. Everything was normal. Um, two of my boys have an immune deficiency. So just for the heck of it, I said, could you test that? Like generally with the immune deficiency, you don't make IgG or IgA. Mm -hmm. IgG being 80% of the antibodies in your body that protect you from um from colds, pneumonia, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so I wasn't showing any symptoms that way at all, but I just thought, oh, for the heck of it, you know, because two of my kids have it, if they could check me, and they did, and I actually have the same um, common variable immune deficiency. Mm -hmm. 
And so, okay, so then that's the only thing that showed up on the that's testing. Interesting. Um, so how how long was it after you got back from Hong Kong that you started feeling sick? Um, I would say the my feet issue right away. Mm -hmm. And I just figured, I mean, we walked and walked and I probably didn't have the proper footwear. So I just kind of put that off to, you know, I'll get back into shoes with good orthotics and that kind of thing. Um, the weight gain probably about four months later mm -hmm. and like the fatigue. Mm -hmm. And you pretty much, you know, I'm assuming that you pretty much when you got back, you, you weren't working out, you know, five, six, seven days a week anymore. No. Yeah. Now, how long had you been training for this boating event? Um, I've worked out on and off, like, ever since I can remember. The Probably a good year would have been, like, for training that hard for that event. Okay, so previous to training hard, where was your, where was your weight and your health at? Um, up and down, like, ever since I can remember. Uh -huh. so, like high school, probably a good 10 pounds overweight. And then, you know, I lost that and got married. And then after having the kids, I, I had a strong belief that it would be selfish for me to take care of myself, like, so to speak, like go to the gym, that kind of thing. It was all about the kids, the business. Um, and I started gaining weight there. Um, I'm trying to think how many years ago it'd be a good Maybe 12 years ago, we, I was out west with my family and we were climbing a mountain. And halfway through, like, I just had the hardest time getting up this mountain. And that's when I realized, yes, it's time to start taking care of myself again. Mm -hmm. So then I started to go to the gym again and I lost a fair bit of weight then. Mm -hmm. So are you on any kind of special diet right now? For the most part, I try to avoid wheat gluten, sugar. I've always known that too much sugar would just wear me down. Um, and too much, like any kind of gluten, if I eat it too much, I get a rash on my skin. So I know I have an issue with gluten too. I'm almost 100% gluten free. But I mean, sometimes if you're out and it just happens, I have, you know, grabbed a bagel or something on the run. Um, as I'm noticing over the last couple of years too, that there's more food sensitivities. Mm -hmm. So for, for the most part, I drink, like I'll have a protein shake in the morning and I'll throw my blueberries and spinach and maybe hemp seeds and usually salad at lunch with um, sometimes like walnuts and feta cheese or sometimes mm -hmm. chicken or fish and, and then supper, same thing, usually like a protein and salad. Do you have any other other health symptoms? Digestion uh, challenges, mood challenges, anything else I should be aware of? Definitely, I figure digestive challenges just because of all my um, my food sensitivities mm -hmm. and mood. Sometimes. Um, in November, I pulled all my calf muscles, so I was on the couch for a couple months. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed then because I wasn't exercising at all. Like, I was really starting to get, um, I don't want to say, like, depressed. Like, never depressed to the point of suicidal thoughts or anything. But just in a mood that I know isn't me and in a space I don't want to be in. Mm -hmm. So. Got it. And, and how did you, t tell me, what kind of boating event was this? Like, was it rowing? Yeah, dragon boating. Yeah, so, okay. So, um, how did you get into that? Um, I had a, I had a friend that had been doing it for years. And then she kept asking me, but again, at that time, I felt with the business, with my family, I didn't have time to do it. And then I had another friend join. So I guess this was maybe like three years. Well, I've been out of that now for for almost three years. So this would have been like six years ago. Mm -hmm. And when the other friend joined and then I realized it was on the same team as my other friend, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to try this. So um, I really enjoyed being part of a team. 
I, I did like the sport. I didn't live and breathe it like some of them, Mm -hmm. but it was neat to belong to a team and, and just the whole experience of going to Hong Kong and China was amazing. So in total, how long had you been training for the boating event? It was only my second year on the team. Mm -hmm. So I was just fortunate in the timing. Got it. So you had been training for two years. That's what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And how was, how was it the first year? Did you lose weight the first year you were training? Um, I don't believe so. Mm-hmm. I think I had been at that weight for a while. And then all of a sudden you just started losing it in the second year? Once you, were you training more? I'm just interested to know. Oh, no. I think when I joined it, I was at a at a lighter weight than I had been for a while. Like I said, it would go up and down maybe 10 pounds. Right. But, and the turning point there was, I want to say around 12 years ago when we were at West. And, and then, so I, I was at the heaviest weight I had been since I was pregnant with my first, my son. Right. So um, that's kind of was the turning point when we were at West and I was trying to climb that mountain and I couldn't. So then I started really taking more interest in my health and, and exercising again. And that's when I lost weight and that weight did mostly stay off for quite a number of years. So then, so I'm just trying to figure out what your weight differential was between the, you know, once you started, once you started training intensely for this boating event, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get how much weight came off because it sounds like you said you were training almost every day. Yeah. Okay. So only five to 10 pounds. Got it. Okay. Okay. That helps me. So did you have any kind of uh, vaccinations when you went overseas? Um, No, without being, because of my, well, I didn't know that at the time, but because of my condition anyways, I can't be vaccinized because I wouldn't make antibodies. Um, so I seen a naturopath and I did the probiotics, the grapefruit seed extract and oil of oregano mm-hmm. before and during. I also did, before I did some adrenal and thyroid support as well before my trip. Mm-hmm. And, and Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, yes, I've, I've considered, I started a parasite cleanse actually two weeks ago because that just kind of came to me that maybe I picked up something, Uh Hong Kong or China. And you're doing that on your own. You're not doing that under anybody else's kind of auspices, the parasite cleanse. No, I'm doing that on my own. It's just like uh, renew life health, Mm -hmm. their formula. Yeah. I've done my two weeks on and then five days off, and now I'm back on. Mm-hmm. So. so you were in mainland China. How long were you in mainland China for? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks. And were you just in the cities? Were you in the countryside? Um, we did all the touristy things. Uh-huh. Uh, so, so I guess both. Mm-hmm. Had you done much foreign travel before that? Um, not a whole lot, no. Where had you been previously that, that would have been considered overseas? Just uh, Caribbean, like St. Martin's, um, Aruba. Um, trying to think where else. I've done a couple cruises, so they stop at a few islands like Grand Cayman. Mm-hmm. And did you see the same naturopathic doctor once you got back, when you started not feeling well? The same naturopath that sort of helped you with all like the, the, the natural immune building substances when you went overseas. Have you seen that same practitioner afterwards? No. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I guess I figured I could help myself and it just got me more reading and digging. And what I've kind of come up with, because I don't make IgA as well, and I know that's the antibody in your, um, that protects your gut lining is a a feeling that I really had to work on my digestive system. Mm -hmm. So I did that by really watching what I ate. Um, But now I'm thinking it's a lot deeper. And that's, you know, that's what I came up with thinking about parasites and maybe um, like bacteria imbalance, that 
kind of thing. You know, it's it's okay to start eating the right food, but if I'm not fixing the problem. Mm-hmm. So I've been thinking deeper now. Got it. How's your sleep? Really good. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> um, good. I almost, and my belief here, and I could be wrong again, because I don't have any antibodies, but I don't get sick. Like I don't catch a cold and that kind of thing. Um, so it's like my immune system to me is on high alert all day. And then when I hit the pillow, I just, I crash. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got it. Got it. Got it. So I think I've, I think I've gathered up some information here. You know, I'm, I'm going to probably ask you more questions, but I want to start to kind of put together some of my thoughts about where you're at right now and how to move forward. You know, first of all, when I hear the big picture, um, big picture to me is always the most important place to see things from. And here you are at 47. You've raised how many kids again? Three. Three kids. Beautiful. (laughs) Tell me how old they are now. Um, my oldest is 23 mm-hmm. and then son, and then my next son is 18 and my daughter 16. Got it. So are they all still living with you? Um, no, it's, it's funny cause my 23 year old just moved back in for a couple months cause he's in between jobs. He's a firefighter. So he was fighting fires like out West and now he's trying to get something permanent here. So that's been amazing for me to just to have him back and spend some time with them. And my 18-year-old's at college, so mm-hmm. he's out, but he'll be back, like, in April. Got this. it. Got it. So you've, so you've spent time raising your kids, you've had your business, and that's been taking a lot of time and energy. And then I hear you all of a sudden start to intensively train. So that's intensive training that you did. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm calling that intensive. Uh, and then after that intensive training... In a foreign country, um, particularly mainland China, um, you come back and your system, it sounds like, kind of crashed. Yes. Uh, just in the, in the most blunt terms. What you're describing to me in a strange way is so not unusual. I have probably heard this story. Well, let's say this. I have heard the story hundreds of times over the years where somebody just goes overseas and travels and comes back and is now dealing with an unknown ailment that nobody can figure out. Um, So invariably when we travel, we can catch all kinds of organisms, many exotic, that the medical experts can never track down. It is one of the great conundrums um, in the healing arts. Um, and it, and so often, so often it just goes unnoticed or dismissed and people don't even make the connection called, I went to another country and I came back ill. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, especially I asked you, had you done other foreign travel? If you had been to China five times before, you know, and if you had been a real world traveler, then that might not have, might not have been a big factor. Um, but this was really, you know, one of the first major times I'm, I'm not going to count the Caribbean so much because, um, we probably have more, um, natural immunization to that area than you will to someplace like China. Uh, so bottom line is at the same time that you're doing foreign travel, when it's easy for the human body that is not used to that environment whatsoever. And there's no, there's probably no one in your genetic lineage going back for many generations that was in that part of the universe building up immunity. Um, So it doesn't surprise me that you got ill. Um, And the fact that you're doing a parasite cleanse uh, makes sense to me because, uh, you know, If you were going to a practitioner, uh, that's what I would recommend that practitioner do at some point. Uh, It's very hard, unbelievably hard to test for parasites. Uh, It's it's just extremely difficult. You can can have a parasite and it never shows up in any of the various kinds of testing that are done for that. So very difficult. 
Um, at the same time, you are participating in a very intense exercise experience. Mm -hmm. That by itself can crash a system, uh, and, and we don't necessarily know it, uh, especially if you haven't been uh, training as an athlete for a long time. Um, a lot of times we take something on and we do it with a lot of gusto. And to me, when you create the recipe of a lot of intense work with your body, plus foreign travel, uh, it doesn't surprise me that you came back a little burnt out. You might have, chances are you could have over-prepared, you could have over-exercised, and your system was just going too much. Um, so... If somebody diagnosed you as adrenal fatigue, I, I, I might not be surprised about that. Um, so and then couple all this with this already existing immune condition, which, quite frankly, I haven't worked with before. Um, that's the big X factor in here, <laughs> because we don't know how we it's, it's unpredictable how that's going to impact you. Um, in terms of intense exercise, in terms of, you know, foreign travel. Uh, that could be, you know, you could be 20 times more susceptible given that condition um, to situations where you can be, you know, at risk to immune assault. So, you know, that's where my brain would naturally go. That's where my mind naturally goes to what's happening for you a, in terms of just the, you know, the, the fatigue, the inflammation, the pain, um, you know, given that you're taking care of yourself with food and you're aware of food sensitivities, that would have been the first place I would have looked. I would have taken you off of gluten. I would have taken you off of, you know, some of the common food allergies, corn, soy, even dairy, yeah. uh, just to see what happens. So if you're already doing that without any great change then it tells me for sure that the action is someplace else mm -hmm. and it's most likely in the travel, the intense exercise with your already existing immune condition, mix that up together. And here we are, <laughs> you know, trying to get better. I honestly believe it is as simple as that only because, again, I've seen this kind of story so often um, and it's the simple, elegant place to look. Um, so, you know, what often happens for somebody in your shoes is you have to go on the kind of healing journey where you try different things. And I have been. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and really, your healing journey then becomes detective work. Your healing journey then becomes, let's try this and see what happens. Let's do this new immune therapy. Let's try this parasite cleanse. You know, <laughs> let's, let's try these new supplements. It's let's work on my digestion. So it's pretty much, to me, going to be like that mm -hmm. uh, until you start to find some relief. And part of it also, so here's another piece. Um, Given that, you know, life isn't easy and you're putting out a lot of energy. You know, when I asked you about the big picture, you were very clear. It's like, hey, I've been, you know, it's I wouldn't change my life. But like raising three kids and having a business of your own, that takes a ton of energy, especially if you're a parent who cares and you're, you know, really paying attention to your kids. That's like having four full time jobs. Um, and it's a lot of energy and it's a lot of output. And then you couple that with a physical challenge in your, in your mid to late forties. And it doesn't surprise me that your system kind of crashed. Things caught up from, you know, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Really that happens to people. Uh, you know, I, I meet people who, and, and this isn't you, but just as an example, I meet people who, they have been eating the worst diet for two or three decades, really. And they've been healthy and fine. And you can't understand, wow, how come you're not dead? Or how come you don't have any symptoms? And all of a sudden, age 40, age 50, their health crashes. Um, 
and it's the cumulative effect of, you know, all the assault to the system finally catches up. So that can happen for people where they finally, you know, come down with diabetes or they finally come down with an arthritic condition because they've been playing the same game of tennis for the last 30 years with the same repetitive motion and their elbow's fine and their elbow's fine and all of a sudden, boom, you know, now they have tendinitis. So what I'm saying for you is my guess, and no one can know these things for sure. So what I'm saying, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm taking very good educated guesses, very good clinical guesses. My guess for you is that you're, you're coming off of a long time's worth of energy output and putting yourself out there without maybe a ton of gas coming back into your tank. <laughs> and the system goes done. Oftentimes when we get fatigue, it's because we need fatigue. To slow us down. <laughs> yeah, it slows us down. I, I often call fatigue like a divine symptom. Uh, I, and I will tell you honestly, I have never, ever met a person who was suffering from some version of ongoing fatigue or chronic fatigue that truly didn't need it. And when I say truly didn't need it, I mean to start to make a life change, to start to make a health change or a dietary change or a lifestyle change or an inner change, an emotional change, a spiritual change, you name it. Um, if we didn't get fatigue, we'd keep moving like banshees, you know, we'd keep going and you would be on to the next race here and <laughs> working out really hard and maybe traveling to some other country. And meanwhile, your system would be breaking down. Um, so in a way, fatigue is the body's way of letting us know you need to slow down. Just the same way tennis elbow is the body's way of letting you know you're doing the same repetitive motion too much and it's going to eventually completely break down your arm and make it useless to you. So I'm going to give you this symptom that lets you know to stop. Uh, and to listen and to look and to do something different with yourself and your self-care and your life. So I think you're on a new program now. And the program is, you know, there's the sub-program called Parasite Cleanse or working with your diet or seeing different practitioners or working with your digestion. That's the sub-program. The higher program, that life with a capital L is putting you on, I think, is called, okay, Kim, what's going on? Almost as if to ask, you know, almost as if to say you have to slow down. You have to listen to your body in a different way. Um, you probably can't push it like you have in the past. Even with that intense kind of a training, my guess is your body's not going to be built for that. Some bodies are really built for that intense kind of training. I don't know that yours is. Mm -hmm. um, I, it doesn't mean you can't work out. It doesn't mean you can't exercise. What you did, I would consider intensive. Um, and it got you down to a very specific weight and likely a very specific body type. So it doesn't surprise me that as soon as you stop that, a bunch of weight came on. Now, granted, you said, you know, your, your weight has gone up and down, you know, for a long time. Um, and it sounds to me like a big factor for you in kind of shifting your weight in your body has been exercise. Is that true for you? Like a big factor, like your, your body shifts when you start to exercise. Um. Definitely diet too, but it's to me, it's always seemed I had to do everything right, or you know, it was kind of one of those things you do everything right, say Monday to Friday, and your weight goes down two pounds, but it's a crazy weekend, and you're on the road and you eat like you shouldn't, and then you're up five pounds. Yeah, so you've had to keep yourself within very tight parameters, mm -hmm. um, and that probably doesn't work for you anymore just as a lifestyle, you know, f whether it's successful or not. Um, it seems like your body's trying to find a different way. 
it seems like you're trying to find a different kind of balance. And I guess, you know, I think for you, the question is, what's going to start sustaining you on a day in, day out level that's not extreme when it comes to dieting and exercise? Uh, I would love to see you at some point, uh, you know, if you, are you exercising in any way right now? Uh, yes, I got back at it around three weeks ago because I injured my, my calf muscles. Mm -hmm. So and, what are you doing? What kind of exercise? Um, I've been doing some Jillian Michaels mm -hmm. <laughs> just because I find it, uh, I don't know, it's, I get bored of going to the gym sometimes. Yeah. So um, it just, it's only a 30 minute commitment. Um, sometimes, so there's been another shift, like at the end of April, we actually left our business. Mm -hmm. So self-employed for almost 30 years. Um, both my husband and I just thought we wanted to do something we were more passionate about. And if we didn't do it now, we weren't going to do it. Um, so I did, I really, I would allow myself every day to sit and read. And I was really, I thought I'm going to just take some time and just really rest. Cause that's what my body's asking for. So I definitely, and that's coming up a year. So I definitely have been resting. Um, I took a part-time job just because I had to get out of the house a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I've realized since then how much self-worth I put in, I measure by my work or how much I accomplish. Um, like even at work, you know, I always had to have lists and if I got through my list, I had a good day. If I didn't, I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and then the longer I was out of work was kind of, like I said, I was kind of falling my moods were changing and I was just getting down and I, I wasn't exercising as much. Um, I just too tired and I wasn't making the time I was in a rut, mm -hmm. but like I said, but then I came up with that. I definitely measure a lot of my self-worth with work. Um, I want to be in work that I'm more passionate about and it's not happening. You know, I, I figured, oh, six months after leaving the business, I'm going to be one of those stories, you know, and I kept visualizing and putting out there people asking me how it's going. And it's, you know, the best thing we ever did. And, mm -hmm. and kind of, <laughs> so, um, so once I did make an attempt to get back at the gym, like I said, about three weeks ago, and I just even short workouts, just trying to um, more about like, Card like the Jillian Michaels approach, I guess I like because you're doing cardio and a bit of weights at the same time, but you're always moving, you know, you might only go for 30, 40 minutes, but you're always moving and your heart rate's always up. Mm -hmm. So you're in a life transition is what I'm hearing. You're in a big life transition. Huge. <laughs> yeah. So it's huge. So what I want to say to you is it is extremely common that when we're in a big life transition, we're also at the same time in a metabolic transition, in a body transition. So your life isn't what it used to be, and it probably never will be what it used to be because you were having young kids and raising a family in a very specific way, and you had your own business, and that was, you know, a very specific kind of lifestyle and work style, and now it's all different in terms of kids, in terms of work. You don't exactly know what it's going to look like. So it doesn't surprise me that in a transition time, your body is in a transition and even it's in a little bit of breakdown, you know, just it, it's, it's people oftentimes when people are in a transition, like they're moving, like they're getting divorced, they're getting married. Um, they're, they're just, just, you know, somebody close to them dies. It's, it's not unusual when we're in a big life transition, a career change. Um, the body goes into breakdown sometimes. And it just seems par for the course. Transition times often come with breakdown. Uh, and, it's, and I think it's part of the strange kind of almost universal, invisible programming that just kind of goes along with life. You know, when a, when a caterpillar is turning into a butterfly in a cocoon, it's sitting in the cocoon essentially breaking down. <laughs> you know, it gets really mushy in there. 
uh, at some point, if you open up the cocoon, you can't find a caterpillar, nor can you find a butterfly. It's just it's just a bunch of breakdown mush. Um, eventually, it it coalesces into something else. So, you know, it, it, it's when we look at the big picture, the end result of all of our efforts, nutritionally, health wise, exercise, is usually death at some point. You know what I'm saying? We all die. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, between birth and death, you want to be healthy and you want to have a great life. And, and that's what my sense is that you want for yourself. And part of the challenge here is staying on the horse, uh, during this transition time. And if you fall off the horse to get back on, meaning it's going to be a little bit of a wild ride. And it's less, I think, that something's wrong with you, oddly enough, and more that your life and your body are morphing. Habits have to change. How you live has to change. Just things have to change. Mm -hmm. And part of the way that the wisdom of life helps us figure that out is it puts us in the unknown. Transition times are filled with uncertainty. You know, for any of us out there that are in a transition time or have gone through a transition time, the hallmark of it is uncertainty. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's coming out the other end. And in a strange way, it's part of the initiation. It's kind of like an initiation. It's kind of like a gauntlet. It's sort of as if we have to go through this challenge, which my assumption is it's going to make you stronger and, and I believe that, too. I, yeah. And it's going to make you clearer, too, about your path. Uh, what I would recommend for you, Kim, I would love to see you, if it feels right, at some point working with a practitioner, somebody who's more of a naturopath or more of a functional medicine doctor, because I think you need somebody who, you know, understands the traditional kinds of medical testing but also understands non-traditional uh, approaches to the body as well. You know, so the non-traditional approaches would be a naturopath, a functional medicine doctor. And, you know, most functional med- medical doctors and many naturopaths also understand, you know, what kind of traditional tests do we have to look at just so you can have another set of expert eyes on this. Um, like you, I I do a lot of self management with my health. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know a lot and, and I get that you're interested in this and it's something that kind of stimulates you. So it makes sense to me that you would self treat. And I love that. I have a ton of respect for that. Um, and I also want to say that we often, you know, it's good to get outside opinions because when it's just me looking at me, I can sometimes miss the obvious. Uh, or just sometimes miss things that I, I, I just wouldn't know. You know, the hardest people to treat if you're a practitioner are your relatives, your significant other, and yourself and your friends. Those are the hardest people to treat. Uh, so I would love to see you get more help in that regards just because. And, and it obviously has to be somebody who you feel good about and somebody who you trust that's important um the weight thing is is interesting here because you know the fatigue and the and the body kind of breakdown is a little more new for you relatively speaking the weight challenge has been around for a while like the weight going up and down when was the first time you you ever thought to yourself i need to lose weight um Probably at like age 12 kind of thing. I know I was young. Mm-hmm. And I always, um, always kind of, you know, you wanted to be, wanted to be beautiful kind of thing. And you'd look at skinny people and think, oh, they must have it all. You know what I mean? Or they're beautiful. How could they have any problems? But <laughs> I've obviously done a lot of growth since then. And I understand more about, you know, our inner self, our inner beauty. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, I feel for, you know, over the last few years, I've definitely in a place where I'm not as much looking to get rid of the weight because I want to, I mean, I do want to look and feel more attractive, but it's not about that anymore. It's about, like I said, how I feel. 
Yeah, yeah, I get that. So that's a place where, you know, you can probably do some fine tuning and fine tuning, not about losing the weight in particular, but fine tuning in terms of what you're thinking and feeling inside about the weight. Um, meaning, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know how important it is for you at this point, how really important it ought to be. And I wonder to myself how much of your working out is driven by losing the weight. How, like what, what percentage of you works out because I want to lose weight. Like if you didn't have any weight to lose and if working out and, and, and if, if you had your exact weight that you wanted, and you knew that you could never work out again and you would stay at that exact weight, would you work out? Um, I find more in the last few weeks, I work out because I know I feel better after. Got it. Got um, it. Mentally. Beautiful. So, so what I want to say is I just want you to watch yourself. I want you to watch your thoughts and I want you to watch what's motivating you. Because my guess is that the majority of you, like over 51% of you, is free of, oh, I have to look a certain way and weigh a certain amount in order for me to be okay uh, and in order for people to love me. And so I think the majority of you understands that you're loved regardless. <laughs> and at the same time, there's still this part of you that wants to kind of get the golden ticket um, because, yeah, you know, skinny girls don't have problems. Um, you know, in a weird way, they have more problems, believe it or not. Uh, I know that. Yeah. You know, I understand that. Yeah. So, so to me, it's continuing to mature into what's important for you. Where do you want to put your emotional energy? Yeah, if working out makes you feel better, Go for it. Um, but I also want you to be aware that you can't push your body like you did training for this event. Yeah. Uh, you can't do it. It's not going to work for you. So, you know, when you say you're doing a 30 minute Jillian Michaels workout, I'm like, yeah, like that's the way to go for you right now. It's sort of finding your sweet spot where you can exercise and feel good about yourself and feel good physically and let that be enough because we don't know what your body's going to do. We don't know what your body's going to do weight wise. And what I want to say, and this is, this is not for everyone, but I'm going to say this is for you, but this is especially for, you know, women who are in their late forties and up or their mid forties and up. There comes a time for men and women, late forties and up, there comes a time when it, it may be that, that we have to just let go a little more or a lot more about I'm going to look a certain way uh, and I'm going to exercise my way to that place. I'm going to diet my way to that place because it starts to be a drain and a waste of life energy. It doesn't, it doesn't serve us. You know, maybe when you're young, we could worry about that and obsess about that more but there comes a time, and this is really age-dependent for a lot of us. And I'm not saying this, this advice isn't applicable for somebody younger. But what I'm saying is, for you, I'm feeling like, you know, this is your time. These, these next many years are your time to explore who am I? How do I want to express myself? And if I'm going to do work that really, that, that really inspires me, you know, what's that going to look like? How do I put my energy into that? And how do I focus on what's truly, truly meaningful to me, you know, on a deeper level? That's where the action is right now, I think, for you. Uh, and it sounds like you're doing that to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done a lot of work. You know, I, I feel I, I try to love and appreciate my body. And interesting, like, my injury happened when I was on holidays. And I was in the wheelchair for a week. But it made me, I'm just looking around at people and saying, like, what we take for granted, like walking, we take that so much for granted, you know, mm -hmm. so, so it brought me back into a place of being grateful again. And 
Yeah, it's it's also, you know, interesting that you say that I, it seems to me, I haven't collected any statistics on this, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a storyteller and a story collector. You know, for me, having been a, been a clinician for 30 years and a coach and a counselor for 30 years, you know, it's, it's, it's really all about listening to people's stories. And, 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 you know, that's what any healing professional does. They take your history, story, his story. So you listen to someone's story and you start to piece together, you know, oh, this symptom, this, this habit, this way of eating, this food, this drug. You take somebody's story and our story, you know, really tells us about who we are and you know your story is this is this beautiful fascinating journey and at some point we have more say in that and how we, or we have more and more say in how we kind of write out our story um and to me you're creating a new story for yourself at this point in life and, you know, one of the common stories I've heard is people go traveling and they get injured <laughs> or people go traveling and they get sick or people go traveling and their system crashes and they just stay in the hotel and sleep for four days or five days. Because oftentimes when we get away from our usual life and all of a sudden you almost have permission to go into breakdown and we have permission to go into a big shift because we're away from our normal circumstance and you don't have to go to work when you're on vacation. And somebody else generally is cooking the food for you. You're eating in a restaurant or it's, it's just different. Um, so to me, the, uh, I, I'm hearing all the story pieces add up to life is asking you to slow down. Life is asking you to go inward. Life is asking you to reinvent yourself, reinvent how you, how, you, how you do everything, really, including exercise, including how you do your weight and how you do your self-care. Um, and I think you're going to be moving at a slightly slower pace in a good way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know a big part of it, I know it's for my husband and I, is the kids growing up and moving out. I, we have always been real family people. We've done a lot of, you know, we've taken off for a month, gone to the Yukon in our trailer, and, you know, we're there with our kids day and night. And it's always, like, we have a really close family in that. So I know that it's a bit of a struggle to move to that next level where, you know, our kids are growing up and going to have their own lives and that. And it's, I think that's why we're both kind of, we left what we're, what we did and we're trying to find ourselves. Um, I think I feel though, I always like when I was, when we were running our business and I went back and took the holistic nutrition course and I just got so excited and passionate. I was going to help other people and, you know, this was more my calling. And, but now I think since I've left work, there's almost maybe like a guilt because all of a sudden my focus went from what can I do for others to, to me. Yeah. How interesting that that happened. What a nice surprise. And part of doing for others is you have to learn how to do for yourself. You've been focused as a mom on doing for others very intensely for a long time. Chances are you've been focused as a partner and as a wife uh, in doing for others. And sure, you will continue to do for others, but you have to fill your own tank. Um, and you have to, we have to sometimes do the personal inner work where we're giving to self. And it just feels like this is a time for you to feed yourself, to charge your batteries to fill your tank, whatever metaphor you want to use, um, we go through those phases. And if we miss them, if we miss the part, the natural life phase where it's time to give to self, then we miss an opportunity. So you're lucky because you have the wherewithal right now to indeed have a little time for yourself mm -hmm. and to do self-exploration. A lot of people don't get that. Um, so you actually have that. And life is telling you. Your life is, 
Your life is talking to you. You know, it, it, to, to me, each of our journeys has a beautiful wisdom to it. Your journey has a wisdom. My journey has a wisdom to it that's smarter than us. Your journey is smarter than you, meaning all of a sudden it's going, yeah, Kim, you thought you were going to be serving other people. And now look, you're just taking care of yourself. <laughs> now, you might look at that as an imposition to your plans. But how I'm seeing and looking on the outside in is that life is saying, sure, Kim, you have bigger plans. You want to help people. You really want to help people. You know, y you have to learn a few things here first. And one of the things you need to learn is to go deeper into yourself to find some of the more talents and gifts that you had to give, to find some of the energy that you have to give. Uh, so I think life is giving you all the proper clues here. And I, I'm getting that you're listening. And it, it feels for me like this session in large part is me over here just confirming a lot of what I think you already know. You know, it's I, I, I don't know if I've said anything to you that's, you know, earth shattering and earth shaking. It's confirming what what, you know, I, I, I feel like you're already following your guidance. And I'm over here saying, yeah, go, girl, you know, trust your guidance yeah. and trust your instinct, trust your intuition. And, you know, even as you're talking about, you know, the, the physical challenge that you're in right now. I, I just have a sense that you're, you know, approaching it from just a very clear place. Um, you're looking at it going, okay, here's what's going on in my body. What's the next logical step to manage this? Mm -hmm. And that's what I think your trajectory is right now, is putting one foot in front of the other. You know, oftentimes, Kim, I, I, I know you know this, but I'm going to say it. It's our own healing journey that teaches us how to be a healer even more. Mm-hmm. So you're learning right now what it is to be a patient, <laughs> your own patient. You're learning what it is to have life change your body dramatically and everything that that means personally, emotionally, metabolically. You're, you're experiencing that firsthand. Um, you're going to be way more sensitive and understanding and insightful about clients if you're going to be in this business than ever before. Mm -hmm. You're going you're gonna to have a lot more wisdom, you know, as you more and more come through the other side with what you're going through. Um, so I think life is just putting you through a real professional workshop, so to speak. Yes, and I, I believe that as well. And, um, and every time I think of something new, like, this weekend, I probably spent 10 hours watching the Healthy Gut Summit, which I've seen you were a part of as well. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've seen a lot of really wonderful speakers. Um, and then I get really excited about a new approach. Hmm. And then I think when that approach maybe doesn't work, then all of a sudden I kind of let myself get into a space again for, you know, maybe a day or whatever that, okay, everyone talks about their journey and what a wonderful journey and how much they learn, but they eventually come out of it. And I think I just finally got in that space of, <laughs> am I ever going to come out of this? Sure. And we don't know. You know, we, we, we really don't know. And part of it, part of the challenge there, uh, and, and, and I think this is a good place to start to, perfect place to kind of wrap up this conversation. Part of the challenge is, a, is a, I'm going to call it a higher challenge, a more cosmic or a more spiritual challenge, uh, and it's called trust. And when I say trust, what I mean is you developing a greater trust in life, in the universe, in a greater intelligence, uh, in God, whatever you want to call it. And it's trust, in part, it's trust that I'm going to be okay. And trust that I'm going to be okay often means, you know, you might not heal perfectly, but you can still be okay. <laughs> uh, meaning, will you still be able to manage your life and manage yourself and do good things in the world and have some joy and some peace and some happiness? So can you trust that no matter what happens with your body, that you'll be okay? Which is different than trusting that I'm going to be 100% back to my healthiest ever. We don't know. 
Yes. Um, so it's so it's trusting that the wisdom of life will give you what you need, and that on some deeper level you'll be okay, even if I'm still in a little bit of fatigue. Mm-hmm. You know, I know people who have had chronic fatigue for decades, and they have they they spent their f- a fortune. Uh, in medical intervention and in brilliant strategies trying to fix it. And at some point, they just learn how to manage it. And they have a life. Mm-hmm. And they have a social life. And they have friends. And they have relationship. And here's when I have to get to bed. And here's what I can eat. And here's what I can't eat. And here's how much walking I could do. And here's how much running I can't do. Um, so then it becomes trusting that you'll learn the tricks to manage your energy. Um, so when, whenever we have fatigue, it's all about learning how to manage our energy better. It's no different than if you told me, Mark, I only have $20 left. I used to have millions and I blew it all. And I want to have a ton of money again. And I'm going, and I would say, if you want to have a ton of money again, I want you to learn how to manage that $20 really well. Mm-hmm. You start with what you have. Yes. How are you going to spend it? How are you going to save it? What are you going to do with it? Learn to manage the money. Learn, in this case, manage the energy that you have right now. That's almost like being in kindergarten again in a strange kind of way. But it's very beautiful. There's something very humbling about it and very, I think, instructive about learning to compassionately and exquisitely manage your energy so you can do the things you need to do right now during the day and get things done. And take care of yourself. And when your body says, Kim, enough, you have the wherewithal right now to go, okay, I'm going to rest. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to just sit and read. I'm not going to push myself. So you have that ability right now. And it's it's a gift. It's a blessing. I believe I have conquered that. Like I give myself permission kind of thing to have a nap because I know lying down for half an hour, then I'm recharged. I'm good to go again. Mm -hmm. And I am grateful in that way that it is just fatigue, say, because I can just lie down and feel better, you know, or have a good sleep and feel better. So there's a lot of people that have to deal with a lot worse than that. Agree. Great work, Kim. Thanks for being such a good sport. And, and, and I know you're on the right path. I, I, I love how you're, how you're managing this all and and taking care of yourself. And I really appreciate you sharing so openly and honestly about your journey. And um, let's let's reconvene. I'll I'll have somebody reach out to you in a bunch of months and and we'll reschedule and check in and and, and do this again and see how you're doing. Okay. Um, Thank you. It's been an honor. Um, I've done your your eight-week eating psychology course. I I repeated it when I was um, off with my leg and lying on the couch every to the eight weeks. Um, You do amazing work. And when I was chosen, I just felt really blessed. And I'm great. Well, well, I feel blessed too. I'm I'm glad we had this time together. Thank you so much. Thank Mm -hmm. you. And thanks everybody for tuning in. I'm Mark David founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating on behalf of the Psychology of Eating podcast. Lots more to come, my friends. Take care now. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for listening to the Psychology of Eating podcast. To learn more about the breakthrough body of work we teach here at the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, please sign up for our free video series at ipe.tips. That's I for Institute, P for Psychology, E for eating dot tips, T-I-P-S. You'll learn about the cutting edge principles of dynamic eating psychology and mind body nutrition that have helped millions of people forever transform their relationship with food, body, and health.